Hello and welcome to Tasting with Matt and Mike. I'm Mike Beach and this is Matt Cohorse. Howdy. And today we are doing some products from Limestone Branch Distillery. Limestone Branch is the distillery founded by Steve Beam and his brother. I think it's his brother or is it his cousin? I think it's pretty sure it's his brother. Um, about six years ago they started up. Uh, um, very small distillery, you know, they're making, you know, like a, a barrel a day uh, at the distillery and uh, some of the barrels that they've got are only 30 gallon barrels, but they're also making many 50, uh, three gallon barrels of product. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is uh, from Steve Beam, who said, I have to make good whiskey because if I don't, my family's going to kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that he's done a really good job. So what we have here are some of these uh, experimental collections, I believe is what he's calling this. It's uh, uh, single barrel products that were uh, um, put together for uh, uh, different companies, different places. Uh, but he has a wealth of information here. Uh, he's got a, uh, um, this is from the liquor barn, it's Nashville, 75% corn, 13% rye, 12% malt bourbon, obviously. The barrel entry proof was uh, uh, just shy of 100, um, basically 99.86 proof. Um, the, out, the bottle proof that comes out here is 95 proof. It, the barrel was a number three char. This is bottle number two out of 118, and it's aged 25 months. That's a really low entry proof, right? Yes, this is very low entry proof. So, uh, this is, like I said, this is our bourbon. It's only a little over two years, you know, basically uh, two years, one month old. Got a good color for two years. Yeah. Uh, this is one of them that was in a 30 gallon barrel, I'm pretty sure, too. Okay. But. Um, What's the difference between having a smaller barrel and a, and a larger barrel? Well, it depends. If you get too small, to me, they're not that good. Mm -hmm. 30 gallon barrels, though, I've had a lot of whiskeys that have come out of a 30 gallon barrel that are, that are decent. You just have to treat them different. You can't treat the whiskey the same as you would in a 50-gallon, 53-gallon mm -hmm. barrel. Uh, one thing is, you know, this is a number three char, not a number four. Number four char would just be way too much char on a smaller barrel. I would say that the number three char on this small 30-gallon barrel is the equivalent of a number four char on a 53-gallon barrel. Gotcha. Okay. You know, with the staves being thinner, you know, uh, not quite as thick to make the bigger barrel uh, on these smaller barrels. You know, when you char too much, you lose all your toast. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. All right. So this is the bourbon. Smells good. Yeah. What amazes me is it doesn't have a whole lot. There's a little bit, but not a whole lot of what that what I call a young whiskey. It's that stuff. that really corn. Yeah. Not only corn, but also kind of a, 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 a chemical I know what aroma. Yeah. You know. Yes. Yeah, you know, I'm getting a lot of vanilla. A lot of vanilla. I'm getting a little apple, like a ripe apple. Mm hmm. I'm getting even like a hint of marshmallow. A little hint of marshmallow, yeah. Mm -hmm. The vanilla kind of toasted marshmallow. Yeah. Maybe just a just a hint of, of some spice. I'm not sure what it is, but it's right there with the oak. You get, of course, you get the smell of oak, but there's a spice in there too. I'm not sure if it's a baking spice or if it's a pepper. It's real faint, yeah. Yeah, it's real it's faint. It's, it's, it, it's merging there. Mm -hmm. Well, let's taste it and see if we can decide what. A lot of corn. A lot of corn. Um, I think definitely black pepper. Mm -hmm. 
particularly on the bench. I agree. Yeah. It's like a candy corn with a black peppery finish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's nice for two years. A little buttery. Getting a little, a little buttery. buttery. Yeah, a little buttery finish to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty good. Pretty good. For two years old, yeah. Not yeah. bad at all. all so right. let's try the cranberry, see what it does. Yeah, mm -hmm. brings out the apple, the fruit, which lingers into the finish. Yeah. Kind of reduces the pepper. Mm -hmm. I'm still getting a little pepper, but not like I was right. before. Yeah, it sweetens the finish, um, but a nice long finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, pretty, I'm not complaining years. about it. Yeah, yeah. For the... It's two years old. You know? Yeah. And, Good tasting whiskey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see what a pecan does for it. That's interesting. It really brings out the butter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a buttery toffee kind mm -hmm. of flavor. Yeah, it's tasty. You know, I'm actually getting a little chocolate on the finish, too, with the pecan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really rich. Yeah. Um, I think I really like this with the pecan. Yeah, it's actually. really good with the pecan, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that one's uh, for, I mean, you said 25 months, just over two years. I mean, yeah. you'd be hard put to find a two-year-old that has a mature taste like that one does, right. you know. Um, yeah, it's really good. So now the next one, is that a rye? This is a rye. As a okay. matter of fact, this one was for Westport Whiskey and Wine, barrel number 147. It's 100% malted rye. Okay. Barrel entry proof was 101.2. The bottle proof is 94. Once again, you've got a number three char on the barrel. This is barrel 22 or bottle number 22 out of 124 and it's 27 months old. Okay. I remember really liking the they have kind of a smaller distillery but a really nice little distillery there. Yeah. I remember those dogs. Those yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, he, he's lost one of those since we oh. were down there. Oh, um, that's too bad. But he's still got one. You know, one of them passed away, but... Yeah, they're sweet. Actually, before I I cleanse my palate from last time, so I'm still, getting, I'm still getting a little finish from that bourbon. Mm -hmm. That pecan really lengthened this finish. Yeah. All right, another nice yeah, color. Yeah, once again, a nice color. Mm -hmm. You know, 27 months, that's what, two years, three months? Yep. Hmm. Interesting nose. What is that? It's kind of herbal. Yeah, that's different. I'm getting a little bit of a rye grass. I'm getting a little bit of like an orange. Mm hmm. Like a tangerine orange. Tangerine orange. But I'm getting an herbal note to it too that I'm trying to. It's almost like a. Tansy? Have you ever had tansy? It's kind of uh, like a mint no. type uh, herb. Hmm. Yeah, I, I can't put my yeah my finger on it, but interesting. Or it's rosemary when you need her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably put her nose right to it. But that's good. It's interesting. Let's see what it tastes like. I'm 
getting that ryegrass, I'm getting that tangerine. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little bit of a, I mean, a cardamom. Cardamom. Just that, yeah. Just maybe a hint of like, uh, like, I don't know. It's, it's, there's an herb there that I just can't. You know what it kind of reminds me of? Not quite, but it sort of. Wormwood. Wormwood. That's interesting. That's the first for a bourbon, right? Some well, this is a rye, but yeah. Well, yeah, rye. I mean, um, but it, 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 it's something along those lines. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's not quite wormwood, but it's you know. Yeah, I could. Yeah, no, I, I, I can definitely get that. Yeah. Um, yeah, very interesting. It's different. It's very different. I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. No. But it's, it's new to my experience. Yeah. Hey, I'm, that's what that's what I'm in this for. You know. Yeah. Taste new. Taste new flavors. Yeah, so let's try it with the uh, cranberry and see what a little sweetness does to it. That really brings out the tangerine. Mm-hmm. It kind of dampens that herbal mm -hmm. until the finish. On the finish, I'm getting like oak and that herb. Yeah. Yes. Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Overall, I think for this one, um, I like the cram with it. I think yeah. Like a, you know, you could slap this in an old fashioned, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that's what I, I wouldn't want to do it in the Manhattan. Right. I think that herbal flavor would really clash with the vermouth and really not make a good Manhattan. But I think, it, uh, you know, an old-fashioned mm -hmm. or possibly even a whiskey sour. Yeah, whiskey sour would be great, too. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Depends on, it, I, I'm not sure whether that herb would play well with the lemon juice. It, yeah. <laughs> but it seems like to lend itself well with the sweet fruit, that, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's try it with the uh, pecan. Some caramel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it spiced it up for me. Like yeah. That. yeah, like pepper. Took that finish right. Yeah, like a maybe. It's like not herbal anymore. It's it's black pepper. Yeah. And, but yeah. that tangerine is still there. Yeah, you still get a hint of that tangerine. Um, I think I, you know what this this one actually goes well if you like put a nut and a fruit to it better than meat. I would say. Yeah. For me, like yeah. So, I don't know if you yeah. want to make like an old fashioned or, or just drink it neat with a with your bar snacks next to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. Yeah, I'm gonna save a little bit of mine here, take it down to Rosemary, and let her see if she can. <laughs> I'll figure out what that herb is. Yeah, yeah good idea. So now we're at the minor case. Yes, minor case rye. Now, I've had this bottle for a couple of years now. He might actually have some older whiskey in it than this now. Mm -hmm. I think I've got one of the bottles. But this one is a uh, 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 24-month-old rye that was uh, finished in sherry cask. Okay. Now, what he does with this is that he... Finishes some of it for several months in a sherry cask. Mm -hmm. But then he takes some and finishes it for like a day in sherry cask. Because in order to put it on here, the sherry cask finish, it all has to touch sherry. Okay. But his idea is, is that he doesn't want the sherry to overpower the rye. And I, I think he does a really good job at this. I think we talked last week with the finished products right. in there. We like whiskeys that complement... The finish complements instead of overpowers. Right, yeah. And Steve Bean does a really good job at that. I guess it's like you want whiskey over wine, you know, right. kind of flavor. Not wine over right. whiskey. So this, he says he just puts this in for one day. Well, some, you know, like say he makes a 10-barrel 
batch. Okay. Two or three of those barrels might be aged for six months or a year in the sherry cask. But the other seven are going to be in there just for a day. Ah, gotcha. Okay. You know, so the, you're going to get a lot more rye out of it. Mm-hmm. And, and you can tell that immediately from the nose. Oh, yeah. You get that sherry raisin... Um, fruitiness, you know, that you get mm -hmm. from the sherry cask, but you still get that grassiness from the rye. You get the vanilla from a rye. Mm, that's very pleasant. Yeah, it's got a great nose. So, it's... Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Get that rye whiskey flavor, but then you get that little hint of sherry fruitiness, that little bit of raisin, uh, maybe raspberries, blackberries, mm -hmm. you know, that fruitiness that you get from the from the sherry. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you get kind of that rye, I guess, in the mouth, and then when, with my, like, when it, the, actually the finish itself kind of blends to the wine and, and the, yeah. And the fruitiness. It's really nice, really smooth, like, yeah. it's delicious, and... Yeah, like I said, we're not. I'm not huge on the the finished ones. What, what, but this what is I really say the good. proof was on this? This was, uh, yeah, a ninety proof. Ninety. Okay. This is really good stuff. Yes. So let's try it with a uh, cranberry and see what it does. When did it become popular to put whiskey into wine? Well. Well, the Scotch industry's been doing it for decades. Oh wow, that cranberry really brings out that fruitiness of the of the sherry. Mm -hmm. But it still doesn't, you know, the, the rye whiskey flavor is there. But to me, it kind of yeah. reverses roles. The sherry is up front with the cranberry, and then the rye comes out in the finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, delicious. Yeah. But uh, the first. Uh, uh, wine finished bourbon was actually a uh, 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 distiller's masterpiece that Jim Beam did back in the uh, mid 90s. Okay. And they did a uh, 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 basically a Knob Creek style whiskey. It was like, you know, a nine year old, ten year old uh, bourbon that was finished in a cognac barrel, I believe it was. Hmm. Okay. Good. Yeah, so let's see what a pecan does. That really brought out the vanilla for me. I mean, almost like a French vanilla on the front. Mm. Yeah, and that, you can still get that that raisiny finish. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it put the sherry back into the finish again. Yeah. Um, but even more so for me, I'm getting like that. Yeah, just like yeah. that. Yeah, that raisin. Um, I'm getting yeah. dry oak with just a hint of that raisin. Yeah. Blackberry tartness, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a little tart fruit, blackberry, raspberry, and raisin sweetness. Yeah, I don't know how to define it, but like when you when you've been drinking a little bit of wine, and that flavor that like kind of lingers in the back, mm -hmm. the finish in that wine, the finish in that wine is it's very reminiscent of like that, you know. Um, but like you said, like you get that ryegrass in the front, and then bam, like in the finish. You yeah, I'm still like tasting like, and it just reminds me straight up of wine, like so, drinking so, a bottle of wine. With so, so I was just inspired by something here. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Should we get a bottle of port, a bottle of sherry, and a bottle of something else, and do a, a tasting with just those three? And, and, and yeah, yeah, that'd be <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. 
So anyway, uh, three great products from Limestone Branch. Yeah. Good job, Steve Beam. Way to go, Steve Beam. Cheers. Cheers.